When I think of hard brackets in R, I think of the English word where, W-H-E-R-E. -E. I always say the word where in my head when I'm thinking about what brackets do. The brackets are the best way, the most elegant way to use subsets, to make subsets in R. Sometimes I've seen students um, do a little bit of Googling when they want a subset of a vector and they end up using a function called subset. That's fine, but really the most elegant way to do this in R and to take advantage of R's power the best is to use the brackets. What does this mean? So let's print out this object 3 again just to remember what it is. It's this vector of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12. Suppose I want to access the sixth element of object 3, which we know is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, should be equal to 10. I can use the brackets for that. So if I say object 3 bracket 6, what I mean is object 3 where I'm interested in the sixth element. So if I run this line by pressing command enter, you can see that object 3 sixth element is equal to 10. So this is how we access a particular element of a vector. I can also put into the brackets a vector. So remember that 2 colon 4 refers to the numbers 2, 3, and 4. That's a vector of the numbers 2, 3, and 4. If I say object 3 bracket 2, 3, 4, it's going to give me the second, third, and fourth elements of object 3. If I run that, you can see I get that. And in this particular case, the second, third, and fourth elements of object 3 happen to be the numbers 2, 3, and 4, but that's a coincidence. If I said, for example, object 3 bracket 7 colon 8, It'll give me the seventh and eighth elements of this vector. And I could also put in a vector of um, element numbers, index numbers that are not consecutive. For example, suppose I want the first and fifth elements of object three. I have to put a vector into these brackets. So I have to concatenate together the numbers one and five. But if I do that, I get the first and fifth elements of object three, which in this case happen to be the numbers one and five. I can also use the brackets to specify which elements of the vector I do not want to see. If I say object 3 bracket negative 2, that's going to give me the vector represented by object 3 except for its second element. And you can see that's what's happened here. The second element of object 3, which happens to be the number 2, has been dropped. Vectors don't have to contain only numbers. Vectors can also contain words. So for example, I can, if I do this here, I can make a vector of the words hello and bye, and if I do that, now you can see, if I print that out, I've got hello and bye next to each other. I've concatenated them together. But if I want to repeat the same value many times, I can use this function called rep. Now, rep is a function. It has inputs and outputs. The first input is the thing you want to repeat a bunch of times, and the second input is how many times you want to repeat it. So if I say rep hello five and give that result, the name object 4, then if I go over here and type in object 4, I see the word hello five times. Note that I also could have said give me the number 5 three times, and it would give me the number 5 three times. So this rep command will work for words, it'll also work for numbers. You tell it what you want to repeat and how many times you repeat it. Turns out to be particularly useful to use this command when you want to repeat a blank a whole bunch of times. And that's useful because often um, you want to create a blank vector as a storage space, and then as you perform some particular analysis, you store things in, in those blank spaces. So just to mention it now, um, before you start learning about why you'd want to store anything in a blank space, you can see if we repeat NA, which is the blank symbol, the missing symbol in R, if we repeat NA 10 times and store that as object 5, then when I print out object 5, it just gives me NA 10 times. Importantly, this NA in R is not a word, it's not a number, it's a blank symbol. Um, different software packages have different ways of expressing missingness. Sometimes it's a dot. Um, in R, it's NA. So here what I've done is I've created two vectors, and I'm going to run them both, and I've called them vector 1 and vector 2. Right, so vector 1 consists of the numbers 2, 2, and 3, and vector 2 consists of the numbers 1, 2, and 1. And I can concatenate those together and call them vector 3 if I want, and I've done that here. Um, so now vector 3 is equal to 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1. One of the nice things about R is that you can do any kind of mathematical operation element by element on your vectors and also on your matrices, which we'll get to shortly. So if I want to add together two vectors that have the same length, 
all I have to do is write the names of the two vectors with a plus sign between. So if I do that here, vec1 plus vec2, it adds together the first elements of the, each vector, 2 plus 1 is 3, the second elements of each vector, 2 plus 2 is 4, and the third elements of each vector, 3 plus 1 is 4. Similarly, I can do element by element subtraction, element by element multiplication, element by element division. I can also do the same operation to every element in the vector. So I can have vec1 squared, this caret here means square. Um, or it means exponent. So if I do caret 2, it means square. If I have vec1 caret 2, then it's going to take the vec1, which was 2, 2, and 3, and it's going to square each value, and I'll get 4, 4, and 9. If I want to take e raised to each value in my vector, I can use this function exp for exponent, um, exp parentheses vec1, because this is a function, and now I'm going to have e to the 2, e to the 2, e to the 3. I could take the log of each value in vec1. In R, the default for log is the natural log, um, base e, but you could change that if you want. So the idea here is anything I want to do, I can do to every element of my vector. If I want to take vec1 and triple every value in it, I can do that by multiplying by 3. So this is really nice because when you have a data set, you often want to do the same thing to every value in a particular variable, for example.